In this video, we're going to talk about how to use a mole map to convert quantities in chemistry. This is a mole map right here, and there are many variations to this kind of idea of a mole map. And if you Google mole map, you're going to find all different kinds. Uh, basically, a mole map is going to work like a road map or like a map at the mall or something like that. You have the you are here kind of arrow thing going on and then if you want to get from one unit to another unit um, you just kind of travel along this map and you follow the different arrows here to get across. Now the reason we use a mole map like this is because we like to be able to convert quantities in chemistry because chemistry is very concerned with the amounts of substances. When I'm saying quantities I'm just talking about how much of something do you have. We measure amounts of something differently depending on the state of the substance. So for example, like a solid, liquid, or gas. Uh, with a solid, we usually use mass. So this is mass over here. And we usually use grams to measure that. And for a gas, which is down here, we would use liters, which is a volume. And so depending on the substance, we're going to use a different unit. And we want to be able to convert between these different units. And that's what this map is set up with. Uh, we have conversion factors, and we're going to learn how to use these conversion factors. Now the reason you'd want to convert uh, is because maybe you would know the volume of gas that you had. Maybe you knew a known volume of gas, and you want to know how much that volume of gas weighs. So you wanted to know the mass of it. Well, you could start on this island, because that's kind of where you are right now. This is the you are here, and you would follow from one island to another and you would kind of cross these bridges these are the arrows you want to make sure you're following the correct direction and each time you pass from one unit to the next you're going to need to multiply by this conversion factor that's kind of bridging these units here and you can move wherever you want as long as you use those conversion factors now right at the center is this unit called the mole and mole is kind of a central unit in chemistry so we have this uh, central unit you always have to pass through so basically you're always converting into this unit the mole and then you can go anywhere from there okay we're gonna try three examples together so let's try this one first uh, what is the mass of 12.5 moles of carbon and so these are the steps that we're gonna use anytime you're converting follow these steps there's three of them and you'll be able to do any conversion and so step one is to write down the given, and I've underlined the given there in green. And then we're going to follow the mole map to find the conversion factor or factors and multiply by the given conversion factors. So let's start here with step one. I'm going to write down the given just as I see it there. 12.5 moles of carbon. So there's my given. And then I'm going to use this mole map here to see where I'm starting and where I want to end up. So my given unit here is in moles, and so I'm right here in the center of the mole map, and I want to get to mass. I want to move over here. So I'm following this arrow right down here, and so I can see that this is the conversion factor that I'm going to need to use to convert from moles into mass. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down. It says x grams over 1 mole. So let's write that in here. So I'm going to multiply by this conversion factor of x grams over 1 mole. And so what does the x stand for? Well, the x stands for the molar mass of the substance. So I'm going to have to look at a periodic table here. I'm going to have to find carbon. And so here's carbon right here. And the molar mass is right there underneath the C. It's 12. I'm just going to round it because I don't need all those decimal places. I'm just going to say it's 12. And that's what the X is. So anytime you are working with that conversion factor where you're looking for the X, you just have to look at the kind of element. So it's carbon. Look it up on the periodic table. And we can replace this X with a 12. And now let's do the math. So we have 12 times 12.5 is going to be equal to 150 grams is going to be our new unit because the moles are going to cancel uh, because they're on opposite sides there. We can just imagine if we have 12.5 moles of carbon, that's just kind of like being over 1. 
and get rid of this underlining. And so we can see if we have the same unit on opposite sides of a fraction like that, this one's on the top, this one's on the bottom, they're gonna cancel each other, and so we're left with the unit of grams. That's one way to double check that you've gotten it right. So there's our answer for this first one. Let's try another. How many atoms are in 25 grams of gold atoms? Step one is to always write down that given quantity. So we have grams of gold, and AU is the symbol for gold. And then I'm gonna take a look at the mole map. And I'm gonna see where I'm starting and where I wanna go. So let me just underline the given here and underline what I'm looking for. I'm looking for atoms. So I'm starting here in mass. Grams is a mass. So I'm starting here and I wanna move across the mole and I wanna get all the way over here to numbers of particles. This word particles can just mean atoms or molecules, really just things, it's number of things. And we use Avogadro's number here uh, because one mole, if you have one mole of something, you're gonna have 6.02 times 10 to the 23 things. So one mole of things is 6.02 times 10 to the 23 things. It's just like a dozen. If you had one dozen things, you have 12 things. It works the same way. So here's my two conversion factors. I have uh, this one right here, because I'm following this arrow, so one mole over x grams, and then I'm following this arrow down here, so I'm gonna use that conversion factor as well. So let's write those in here. Again, we take our given and we're going to multiply by these conversion factors. So the first one is one mole over x grams. And I know that x is going to come from the periodic table. So I'm looking at gold. And here's gold, AU right there. So it's 197. I'm going to round that. And I'll write that in there. 197 comes right from the periodic table. And then the next conversion factor is right here. I'm following from moles because that's where I am now, moving across. And I want to get to number of atoms, number of particles. So I'm going to use this conversion factor next. So I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms for one mole. And let's go ahead and cross off our units before we do anything. Again, 25 grams is just like being over 1. So I have grams on opposite sides. I have moles on opposite side. And so you can see we're going to be left with units of atoms of gold. So that's just what we want. So when you do the math here, we're taking 25 grams and we're multiplying it by 1 over 197. In other words, we're taking 25 divided by 197. And so we end up with an answer of 7.6 times 10 to the 22 atoms of gold. And so there's our answer. Let's go ahead and just try one more. Here's the last one we're going to do. So if you had 22.2 grams of helium atoms, how many liters of helium atoms would you have? Let's start by writing the given. That's always going to be our first step. So we have 12.2 grams of helium. And then let's check our mole map here to see what conversion factors we're going to use. So we know that we have mass to start off. And we are moving across the mole. We have to pass through there. So there's our first conversion factor. And then we're going to go all the way down here to gas volume. And so our next conversion factor is going to be this one right here, 22.4 liters per one mole. And so we're going to end up with liters. So let's go ahead and put in these conversion factors here. So we're going to multiply this by the first one, which is right here. We're moving across from mass to moles. So we have one mole over x grams. And remember that x is going to come from the periodic table. If I zoom in here on helium, there it is, the molar mass is 4. I'm just going to round that to 4. And so let's go ahead and put that in there uh, for the x. So we have 4 grams there. And then our next conversion factor, I'm moving across from mass. That's where I started. And now i got to move down here to a gas. And the cool thing about gases is that no matter what kind of gas you have, every mole of gas is going to have the same volume. It's always 22.4 liters, no matter what the gas is. So we're going to use this conversion factor right here along this arrow, 
liters per one mole. And let's check to make sure all of our units are going to cancel. Grams is going to cancel. Moles are going to cancel. And I'm left with liters of helium. So that's perfect. That's just what we want. So let's go ahead and do the math here. So we have 12.4 uh, grams times 1 over 4, which is just like 12.2 divided by 4, and then times 22.4. And we're going to end up with 68 liters of helium. And that's how you use a mole map.